urbanization and the building of properties in the city is something that's really important for the economy to keep moving. Uh, that lots of capital surpluses get invested in the city in order to keep the economy afloat. Um, and I was sort of curious as to what you think the dynamics are of that in Chicago. Uh, because during that talk, we sort of talked about public space in Chicago, but not so much how capital surpluses in Chicago specifically are being utilized in the urbanization process. The second question was about if... Um the relationship basically between capital or private enterprise or economic growth, private economic growth, and housing and urban development. There is no question. Indeed, when I talked about the Housing Acts of 1937, 1949, and 1954, really, you know, one can't talk about those acts without talking about the role of the building and construction industries um, and their uh, benefiting from the various acts, even though early on some of them were on the opposite side, meaning they thought that this would um, that this would undermine the private market, and thus they were not in support. But soon they realized what a boon it was that the federal government was building houses and that they would benefit. And so there's no question that there is a relationship between wanting money to go for building housing, and indeed I would say that that's it would be a good thing if right now in this moment when we have our various stimulus packages, while I think it's important to build roads and bridges and those kinds of things, it is unfortunate that we haven't included housing, especially housing for lower income folks, in that list of things that is in that we need right now. I had some statistics, but now I put them back in my bag. Basically, things like um, there is no city in the country in which someone who works full time earning a minimum wage can afford a fair market rent apartment. And I could give a zillion more statistics about how the supply, oh, here's one more. There are nine million families, uh, nine million low-income households buying for 6.2 million apartments that the rent is affordable for those nine million households. Yeah, that math doesn't work, which means there's not enough supply of apartments at rents that low-income families can afford. So we really do have a housing crisis. We know about the housing crisis for folks with mortgages and folks who are losing their homes and so on, but the housing crisis that we don't talk about is for low-income folks.